The doors to the Viridian Tea House are open once more. Hello everyone, it's another video. So I've got a cool book, cool music, and cool tea to talk about. No news, unfortunately. Let's see, do I have any news? Um, oh yeah, well the only news I have is that my newest blend, The Art of Journaling Herbal Tisane, is available on my website, viridianteacompany.com, and also in the Etsy store as well. There will be an, uh, several more new blends coming throughout later this year, but I'll announce them uh, once they've been revealed. But for right now, the Art of Journaling Herbal Tisane is hibiscus, peppermint, and lemongrass. It's a perfect way to get your journaling on, whether it's junk journals or art journals or writing journals or what have you. Journaling is very cool, and this Herbal Tisane is just my nod to all those who love to journal, like me. All right, so let's get to the book. So let me just say, this book I have been slightly obsessed with ever since I first read about it. Because everybody was talking about it in literary circles. Oh, you know, this book is amazing. This author is amazing. You know, he's so prolific. He's so literary. You have to read it. You have to read his newest book. You have to read it. And I noticed that when I tried to look it up at one of the library systems that all five copies were checked out. And I thought, okay, that's either a book club or what's going on. So I ended up getting a, I purchased a copy of the book and I kept putting it off and putting it off. And I said, no, just read it. So I read it and I've got a lot of thoughts about it. This is The Suicide Museum by Ariel Dorfman. And let me just read the inside of the cover for you. An expansive, engrossing mystery for fans of Gabriel Garcia Marquez, Margaret, At Margaret Atwood, and Bill McKibben, from the acclaimed author of Death and the Maiden. Ariel needed money, and Joseph Hortha had it. When the billionaire Holocaust survivor approaches him with an unusual job, uncovering the truth of Salvador Allende's death, he accepts. Bound by gratitude toward the late Chilean president and a persistent need to know whether murder or suicide ended his life during the 1973 coup, the two men embark on an investigation that will take them from Washington, D.C. and New York to Santiago and Valparaiso, excuse me, and finally to London. They encounter an unforgettable cast of characters, a wedding photographer who can predict the, a couple's future. He was really cool. A policeman in pursuit of a serial killer targeting refugees. A revolutionary caught trying to assassinate a dictator. And above all, the complex women who support them along the way for their own obscure reasons. Before Ariel and Joseph can resolve a quest full of dangers and enigmas, they must help each other come to terms with guilt and trauma from personal catastrophes hidden deep in the past. What begins as an intriguing literary caper unfolds into a propulsive philosophical saga about love, family, fascism, and exile that asks what we owe the world, one another, and ourselves. By boldly mixing fiction and reality, imagination and history, the Suicide Museum explores the limit the limits of the novelistic genre, expanding it in an unsuspected and exceptional way. And about the author, Ariel Dorfman is a Chilean-American author born in Argentina whose award-winning books in many genres have been published in more than 50 languages and his plays performed in more than 100 countries. Among his works are the plays Death and the Maiden and Purgatorio, the novels Windows and Confidence, and the memoirs, Heading South, Looking North, and Feeding on Dreams. I actually got introduced to Mr. Dorfman's work by reading the book Mascara, which if you ever find a copy of it, do yourself a favor and read it. That's all I'm gonna say about it. He writes regularly for the New York Times, Washington Post, the Los Angeles Times, the New York Review of Books, The Nation, The Guardian, El País, and CNN. His stories have appeared in The New Yorker, The Atlantic, Harper's, The Three Penny Review, and Index on Censorship, among others. A prominent human rights activist, he worked as press and cultural advisor to Salvador Allende's chief of staff in the final months before the 1973 military coup 
and later spent many years in exile. He lives with his wife, Angelica, in Santiago, Chile, and Durham, North Carolina, where he is the Walter Hines Page Emeritus Professor of Literature at Duke University. Ah, <laughs> that's a lot. So I always try to be honest whenever I do book reviews, and I'm going to be honest with this. Yes, I was looking forward to reading The Suicide Museum because, like I said, I've heard so much about it in certain literary circles, and I just, I wanted a copy. I was like, I, I, I want to get caught up in this fervor. So for the first 300 pages, because the book is actually uh, 676 pages. So for the first 300 pages, I was enthralled. I, every time I picked it up, I just got sucked into the words. I was right there with Ariel Dorfman and Joseph Hortha as they try to figure out if Allende was assassinated or if he killed himself. By the time I got to page 334 or 354, I lost steam. And one of the big reasons why I lost steam was that there was a major reveal and I thought, oh, wait, I thought we already covered this. Oh, now we have the real reason why everything's going on. Oh, I lost steam. And I ended up kind of skimming through the last several hundred pages, got to the end, and was slightly disappointed. Um, unfortunately, I read a couple of reviews on Goodreads and... I hate doing that, but yet sometimes it's like, am I the only one that's feeling this way about a certain book? And then I read other reviewers and I think, okay, so it's not just me. So it wasn't just me. And I read the big reveal and it was a disappointment. It really was. Having said that, this is the second book I've read by Mr. Dorfman and I love the way he writes. I really think this could have been chopped in half and it would have made a kick-ass book. Well, okay, not really kick-ass, but an enthralling literary mystery that keeps you guessing until the very end. But yes, yeah, 676 pages, it was just, it was too much. And I, I lost interest, unfortunately. Um, so on Goodreads, I, I'm giving it the same review that I'm, I'm giving now. And for Viridian Tea House, it does receive three pots of tea. I, like I said, I really do. I'm trying to choose my words carefully. I really did enjoy his writing. And I got sucked into this world, this fictional version of the author and his wife. And everything that he's talking about, he apparently went through. But at the same time, I just wanted it to be over. And I hate that. I, I really do. You know, it's it's funny, eh, not funny, haha, -ha, that sometimes I'll get like a really thick book and I just plow right through it. And I'm like, I want more. What do you mean this is over? And then other times it's like walking through very cold oatmeal. This was not walking through very cold oatmeal, but the oatmeal still had a little bit of warmth left, but I was just ready to get out of it all the same. But there is intrigue. If you are interested at all in Chilean history or just South American history, this book is right up your alley. And it also kind of gave me a little pet project. So this year, one of my resolutions is to read more world literature. And I only know just maybe two or three Chilean authors, Isabel Allende is one of them. And I said, you know what, change that. Look up Chilean authors and poets and playwrights, South American poets, playwrights, authors, and read more. Get to know the different countries, the different history, get to know it. And I'm, I'm, I'm actually starting to do that. So uh, right now I'm I'm with one of my favorite uh, Scandinavian authors. And every time I read his work, I just get angry because he writes so well. But I digress. But yes, The Suicide Museum by Ariel Dorfman. It is very much a literary mystery with a little bit of imagination, a little bit of realism. But overall, he really is a master storyteller. I just wish the book would have been half the size, but 
Many thanks to Other Press and Mr. Dorfman for this book. Thank you. So now let's get to, I only have one book in this video, so I can supplement with a really cool CD that I started listening to. So long story short, uh, at the last Magic Makers Market uh, earlier in January, I had the pleasure of meeting the singer-songwriter entertainment for the day. Her name is Jessie McLean, and she lives here in Denver. Well, she's originally, or she used to live in New Orleans. So when she mentioned that, I walked over to her and we talked for a while. And uh, we ended up uh, doing a bartering for one of her CDs for one of my uh, tea blends. So this is one of her CDs, Oral Elixir, Partially Domesticated Amazon, Exposed. And let me just say this, Jessie McLean is quite a talented singer-songwriter. And listening to her at the Magic Makers Market, she is, if you're into Tori Amos or Kate Bush or uh, Jonathan Brooke or just, or Fiona Apple or any really excellent are you human kind of singer songwriter you need to check out jesse mclean like i said this is one of her cds oral elixir but she now goes by jesse mclean and the scotch i know that they just put out a new song um oh my goodness smile i think that's the name of it everybody smile but um you can find it on her website which i'll put all of her social media on this video and then if you happen to listen to YouTube or Spotify, I think it's on those platforms as well. But this particular CD had me enthralled. Very much Tori Amos. Like I kept listening to her and I thought she sounds so much like Tori Amos and yet she has her own style, her own way of being a storyteller in a sense. None of the songs were horrible. All of them were excellent. And yes, I, I will be purchasing all of her CDs and songs very, very soon. But with this particular album, this was actually recorded live in New Orleans and NOLA uh, March 15th and 16th, 2011. And it's Jesse McLean, piano and vocals, Andrew Wolf, upright bass, and Johnny Vitikovich on drums. So yes, I... I fell in love with this CD. I fell in love with, with her uh, music and her singing and all of that. And she's a sweet, very sweet person. If you ever get a chance to meet her or see her in concert, please do it. Just go. You will not regret it. So uh, many thanks, Jesse. And if you're watching this video, thank you so much. And like we talked about at Magic Makers Market, I, I'm, I'm ready to do that thing that we talked about. So just let me know. But anyway, Partially Domesticated Amazon Exposed by Oral Elixir. Check it out. Buy it. Tell your friends. Do all the above. Great music. So now to the tea portion. This, uh, my boyfriend purchased. We were recently in Boulder. And this comes from Kucha House of Tea. They have several locations in Colorado, but if you've ever been to one or you've heard of it, it is quite the experience. You walk in and there's just shelves and shelves of tea and it's very calming and it's just, you don't want to leave. And so the tea that we're trying today is organic firefly chai. And that's it right there. And the ingredients are black tea, ginger, cinnamon, nutmeg, cardamom, and vanilla. I remember he wanted, my boyfriend wanted a, he wanted to buy some chai. So I was sniffing the different ones. This one grabbed my attention, not because it was so overpowering, but because the notes were very well, just blended well together. So from me to you, a cup of Firefly Chai from Kucha House of Tea. That's a winner. This is my second time trying this tea, but this is very much a winner. And I didn't put any sweetener in this and it is absolutely gorgeous. It's a gorgeous chai. So I actually do have a chai in my tea company, but every time I have it, I sell out of it and it takes me forever to replenish it. So 
For all y'all who enjoy my Viridian chai, I will have it back in stock, I swear. I really will. But in the meantime, Koo Cha does have a website. I'm looking at it right now on my computer. So you can order this lovely tea and many others, and I'm sure they will ship it to you. All right, so that's all I have for today. So let's wrap it up with a water or tea breathing meditation. You know the drill. We're just going to focus on our breathing. Make sure you have a cup of your favorite tea or a glass of water nearby. And let's begin. Now let's end this breathing meditation with a deep breath in through the nose and out through the mouth. Slowly open your eyes or allow your eyes to come back into focus. And now let's have a sip of your water or tea. Smooth and delicious. So that's all I have for today. Many thanks to Koo Cha House of Tea for their delicious organic firefly chai, for Jesse McLean and the Scotch, to Other Press and Ariel Dorfman for that literary work, and to y'all for watching these videos. I truly do appreciate it. And if you like what you see, please give it a thumbs up or give us a comment. If you are an indie author and you're looking for reviews, please send me an email to tgoddess, T-E-A, goddess74 at gmail.com. If you are a singer-songwriter or if you have a tea company or if you just make really cool shit, please email me. I would love to talk about it on Viridian Tea House. I really, really would, and I will be honest about it. So that's all I have. Take care of yourself and each other. Raise your teacup high, and remember that to drink tea is to enjoy life. I will see y'all really soon. Bye for now.